All right, so we got to kind of unpack some of the the stuff that's happened over since our last podcast. So our last we we did two coronavirus esque podcasts where it was kind of over the phone, kind of terrible quality, kind of just I mean did it out of boredom. I mean there was yeah. I, there was nothing going on. So we kind of got to unpack where we're at now. Um, what's been going on? What is it like July? Eighth, ninth today. Ninth, I think. Ninth. I mean, come on, summer's almost over. Mm-hmm. This has been the weirdest summer probably ever. Um, Easy. Like, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> this whole thing. I mean, being stuck inside for months and like everything and the whole wear a mask thing and every like the bars are closed, restaurants are closed, school was closed. I was in Arizona and suddenly like, you know, mm-hmm. we're trying to book a flight home and there's no one on the flight home. It's just crazy talk right now. Like, don't play in these big empty stadiums because it looks like a ghost town. Mm-hmm. Like, get, well, get yeah, out of here. Logistics wise, it's just so much easier too to just put everyone in a bubble, have them all play at these stadiums that are twenty minute drives mm-hmm. apart from each other. Exactly, and I mean that that helps with the travel. That helps. I mean, come on, this is the, this is the best idea I think possible. Mm-hmm. Like, if they don't do this, someone's not listening to this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Dude, absolutely needs to be listening to this podcast. I mean, come on. Welcome to episode 23 of the Media's Input. I am your host, James A. Paxson. To check out this interview and previous interviews of mine, go to my YouTube channel, James Paxson. Episode 22 had Blaine Fowler from 96.3 WDVD, host of the Blaine Fowler Morning Show. That was a fun interview. Today we have the host of the hybrid podcast, Mr. Noah Cole. I've actually had the pleasure of being on the hybrid podcast with Noah Cole, and I'm going to love asking you this question. Do you remember what our most important topic was when I was on the podcast a couple years ago? Jeez, it's been a long time. Um, I don't even know. What, what is it? I don't know. Will the AAF be successful? Oh, man. Throwback. <laughs> Little did we know. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting you to remember. Just I looked back and I was like. That was a long know. time ago. I mean, we did talk about basketball. We talked about yeah. Paul George and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And yep. so it's not like we, our whole episode was that. But I went back and looked at it, and I was like, the time I was on Noah's podcast, we talked about the AAF. Yeah, and now it's just not a thing. And the XFL is not a thing. And it's, you know, sports are just crazy right now. That, that was a whole different world back then. That was nuts. Yeah, we were talking about, you know, could Paul George and Russell Westbrook play together? Now you and I are going to talk about can any sport play anywhere at any time right now? That's sure. basically the world we live in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, it's nuts. It's, it's more like every single day you see a game, you may not see one tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and like I, I remember where I was, I, you know, I was on spring break with my family when, you know, we, we went out to dinner and we went to a restaurant and I kind of looked up like, glanced over at a tv um and i thought it was a joke i like you know i kind of saw it like the nba has suspended their season and i thought it was like one of those you know those like mayhem commercials yeah. where they're like completely like just irrational and then when i like actually saw it and then woge popped up on the screen and they actually were like no this is legit like we're shutting down the season i mean i remember just being stunned and then when march madness you know and everything else just kind of followed with it and i I mean, I didn't know what to do. There were months where I just had, you know, nothing going on. Obviously, everybody was in the same boat. But, I mean, it's so nice now that I can turn on my TV and watch the Tigers. And, you know, even though they stink, but also, like, the fact that I can just watch something is just incredible. Yeah. um, Funny enough, I'm sitting at home on spring break, and – I got to decide if I'm driving to work to do the Saginaw Spirit game because the OHL didn't cancel their season until three hours before the game. Yikes. So <laughs> it's like around noon, and I'm talking to um, the play-by-play broadcaster, Joey Botano, and I'm talking to other people, and I'm talking to people who work at my radio station, and they're like, we don't know. We don't know. And I'm like, all right, are we playing tonight or not? Because right. everyone else <laughs> isn't playing. So yeah. I don't know why we would, but also we haven't canceled yet. so. Do the other team travel? Uh, no. Okay. We didn't find that out till later, though. Yeah, so, all I mean, right. They could have let you know. <laughs> well, I mean, technically they could have said that, and I would have been like, all right, I'm not going. But then I had yeah. to wait for the final, you know, announcement. But, yeah, I mean, it's good to have sports back. You know, quite frankly, 
I I watched a lot of sports I usually didn't watch. I've never been the hugest follower of soccer just because yeah. I watch so much other stuff, but I've watched Premier League, you know, and that it's been working over there. Can't can't say I've I've stooped to that level. Can't say can't say I'm there yet. <laughs> and, you know, did you watch uh Phil versus Tiger, Tom oh, Brady, Peyton Manning? You know, it, like golfing back golf obviously being like one of the first sports that kind of came back has been great um especially because you know like if if you do listen to the hybrid podcast or if you do like you know kind of know myself and and Nathan Ward my co-host we are I'm we're big golf guys I play golf pretty much every day I'm a sports management major like getting into the golf like world and when the PGA Tour came back I mean honestly the best thing for a game that needs all the eyeballs it can get and having some of these young stars kind of come up early and, and show that, yeah, we can have, you know, this incredible game and we can play it even with some of the positive cases that they had like early on and everybody was really concerned. I think the PGA tour especially has done a really good job at, at minimal minimalizing that damage and keeping everything running smoothly, despite, you know, there being times with every sport. I mean, look at MLB right now, there's times where, you know, stuff happens um, because this is so new to everybody where you're just kind of like, I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't, like you were saying, I don't know if there's going to be a game tomorrow. I don't think there's, I don't know if there'll be a tournament tomorrow. Um, that kind of stuff, you know, it, it almost adds something to everything because you're watching it and this could be, it's like live every day like it's your last. That kind of mentality is, is how we're watching sports right now. And it's weird because we never had this problem before, but like, you know, years, months, even, you know, X number of time ago, you know, you could just turn on your TV and there was something going on. Now it's like, I'm setting alarms on my phone for, you know, for the next baseball game to come on because I miss sports so much. And it's just, I mean, it's just all totally different time. When it comes to all these sports right now, where are you at with, are they going to finish? Are they going to have zero or limited problems? Are they going to have a lot of problems? You know, we have baseball yeah. going on right now where if it's not the Miami Marlins situation, it's gone pretty well. You yeah. know, we saw with the Tigers and Reds, the Reds had a player who tested positive, but they had someone come up, fill his spot, seem pretty good. Yeah. And with the Miami Marlins right now, that now it's 17 players and coaches, and, you know, that's kind of having a problem. NBA had no positive tests. NHL had no positive tests. Golf's been going on decently well. Where are you at with these sports going on? You know, that's interesting because, you know, obviously the the thing you hear a lot in the news is let's get this vaccine. Let's get the, you know, get something out there so we can just stop this right away. And I don't, you know, based on what I've seen, I don't think that's realistic until well into the spring of next year, Um, which kind of points to me that there are some legitimate issues. Um, like what, what we're seeing right now with, with MLB, um, there isn't that bubble. There isn't that, that like the NBA is doing where everybody's in Orlando and they're, you know, nobody's leaving. Nobody gets to see their family. The MLB decided we're not going to do that. The Players Association was like, no, we, we're not doing that. Um, but because there's that aspect of travel, that means there's always risk that is, that is possible to take on. And I look at the MLB and I think, the, that Major League Baseball is one of those sports where they could probably get away with it and they could probably be fine. Um, like what's happening right now with the Marlins, um, like it's, it's, a, it's a situation where really you have a 60-game season. You've crammed all these games already into this tight schedule and now you're, you're, you're canceling games. Next thing you know, we're going to have double headers. We're going to have stuff like that where it's really a challenge to finish the season out. I think realistically can they do it yes absolutely I you know from what I've seen so far it's totally possible yesterday I probably would have said the exact opposite thing yesterday I probably said there's no chance but I mean now it's just kind of up in the air my biggest concern easily is football I I won college football I don't think has any chance you know with the Big Ten going to uh you know conference only games it really hurts the smaller teams I know a number of colleges have already canceled their fall sports. None of like the D one colleges have yet, but I think it's just a matter of time. Um, And then in terms of the NFL, I think it's the same thing. Their season's just too big. There's no realistic way to prevent people from seeing people outside of the game, outside of their community and building that bubble in the NFL, because 
one, there's just too much money involved. And two, it's just too big. There's, you know, you can't make a bubble that big and include that many people and test that many people. I mean, if they can, I'm going to be blown away, but I, I just don't think it's realistic in any way. What are your thoughts with spring college football? That sounds horrible. Honestly, like, I mean, I'm here for it because, you know, it's football, but also like that's, are, so are you referring to like college or are you saying like we throw the, you know, the NFL in the spring? No, no, I'm saying college because Harvard, Yale, and the rest of the Ivy League will have their football in the spring of 2021. So what if the Big Ten decides to do that? Or do you think it's such a bad idea they're not going to do it? I mean, I'm, I'm wondering how to think about it. Because me personally, I think you're just ruining the next year. Yeah. These guys are going to be injured, and some of these guys end the season with six to eight-week injuries. And if you do football in the spring, I think mathematically you're going to be in summer camp by the time they can't even play because of their injury. Or they just flip it all together forever. <laughs> I mean, right. that's probably okay. – I mean – the idea in theory on paper as a college student sounds awesome. Having football in general sounds awesome. The problem I have is look where we were in the spring last year. Um, that's, I mean, that's flu season. That's, that's when things tend to get really bad. And if we don't have a vaccine, which nobody really knows if we will, you know, we can't guarantee that, you know, the, the spring's going to be better or it's realistically could be worse than where we're at right now. So I don't know if that's a realistic fix. Um, that feels like one of those like delaying the inevitable sort of things that you know, like that, that the Ivy League's doing, and I don't, I don't necessarily love it. So as of right now, you think MLB will finish the season? I think they have a chance. Yes. Yeah. NBA. I mean, the NBA has been fine so far. Um, they are doing the bubble thing. I think this season they will finish. Um, the, I mean, that's their big goal anyway, like to just end the season that they already started. That's where they kind of have a leg up on football, where the football season hasn't started at all. Nobody has done anything in the, in the 2020 football season at all. Whereas major league or uh, the NBA basically is, is doing, they're just basically cleaning up what is, what already happened. And because of that, then they can build this bubble like we've seen because they're not, you know, the NBA season's a long season. It's one of those seasons that goes, pretty much all year they really only have like a small window where they're off and even then they're still doing things um so for them I think what I would be more nervous about is next season not you know the conclusion of this year because I think realistically you can put a bubble around them you can say all right don't don't do anything stupid let's be smart here let's have everybody staying in the same hotel everybody's doing the same thing and we'll test you periodically and it's fine but to do that through the span of an entire season, which is basically an entire year, isn't realistic. Players don't want to do that. They don't want to, you know, not see their family. I don't think that's where my concerns are. Not for this season, but for next season. Talk to me about where your love of sports came. You know, the history of Noah loving sports to where now you do the hybrid podcast with Nathan. And where'd you get the idea for the podcast? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's an interesting thing. And I, I'd say my story is a little bit different than, than the average person. Um, I grew up down in like the Midland area. I grew up on Sanford Lake, which is actually not a lake anymore. There was massive floodings. Um, but I grew up, I grew up there and went to Midland schools, but it was a far enough drive where my parents really didn't want us involved in sports at all. Um, so I never really played sports growing up, which was a good thing and a bad thing because it, it kind of made me this super uber competitive person with my siblings. And we played, we played football in the backyard. We played baseball in the backyard and we had, you know, with our neighbors, we had like tournaments and stuff that we put on and it was just fun. And that was, that was what my life was. And then moving up, up to the Gaylord area um, is where I really started to get involved with golf, you know, living on a golf course, you know, playing as much as I can and, and still having that competitive drive where then, you know, going to a small school, I was able to play, you know, five different sports at one time and really get involved into sports and really just fell in love with them. You know, it was never one thing where I was obsessed with every sport at one time. Um, I really kind of jumped around from what sports I was really interested. Obviously, you know, my family grew up big Michigan State fans. I used to go to, you know, Michigan State games all the time. My, you know, we had season tickets to the, the Saginaw Spirit. 
So when I was younger, I used to go to a ton of Saginaw Spirit games, which was awesome. Great Lakes Loons, same thing. You know, I grew up watching um, Clayton Kershaw pitch for the Great Lakes Loons. It was, it was awesome. It was fun. Um, and then from there, just, you know, loving sports so much and having this, this desire to talk about sports and wanting an outlet to talk about sports is really where the podcast came about. Um, just because I didn't, I didn't have an outlet like that. You know, my parents aren't really into sports. My siblings, you know, my one brother's an entomologist in Montana who doesn't really follow sports at all. Um, you know, it's, it's, it was a situation where I wanted to talk about sports and I wanted to share my views on sports, but I didn't have any way to do that. So I kind of sat down and came up with the idea of the podcast. And when I was figured out a way that I could do it relatively efficiently and inexpensive, um, I kind of jumped on the idea and started doing it. And then, you know, Nathan Ward joined about a year later um, and we've had about 50 episodes so far. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. What makes you and Nathan a good pair? We, that, I mean, that's fascinating. <laughs> we, uh, so we both play a lot of, you know, a lot of golf together and we are, you know, really good friends and have been really good friends pretty much since I came to Gaylord. Um, we just kind of, have similar views but not always the same views which I think is really important um when you have a podcast because if both parties just agree on everything all the time then there's there's nothing there um where he has I wouldn't say has had a had a different life but he kind of grew up in sports a a lot earlier than I did but also you know he's just one of those guys who knows a lot about sports he played you know, as many sports as I did, he, you know, he's, he's really into it and he knows his stuff, which I respect a lot because I mean, it would, it would drive me nuts if I was with somebody who didn't know their stuff. Um, so, you know, that it's, it's, it's been fun, you know, having like a, a partner in, in the podcast game, it makes the whole thing a lot easier and just having somebody who one, I can trust two you know, knows his information and three is just an overall good guy. It, you know, it brings a lot to the table. Out of your 45 episodes, could you rank a best episode so far? Easily. Tiger was winning the Masters. Easily. I think it's episode 26. Like, honestly, if, if anyone's listening to this and they, they were like, what is this podcast? Like, you know, I'm going to go check it out. Episode, I want to say it's 26. It says on the title that it's the, like, special edition Masters episode. That episode was so good. I mean, just War and I both being, like, huge golf fans. And that was actually before War was technically – a co-host on the podcast but you know I brought him he was we watched the Masters together and then afterwards we were like we have to talk about this like people need to know what just happened this is crazy so we you know we jumped in and we went from everything from you know Tiger Woods obviously like the embrace with his son with with Charlie and you know the excitement there to to Tony Finau wearing these immaculate gold pants that look super cool and I wanted to buy a pair we talked about everything it was awesome um so easily that's that's my favorite episode for sure I mean, it was one of the best moments in sports because Tiger was a young kid coming up to a great golfer, to beloved in the face of the sport, to hated. Everyone hated him for most of the world after his drama came out and after his sponsors came out. And then he tried to come back and he couldn't because of injury. And then to win the Masters, I mean, it was, I never thought he could do it, to be honest. I know I shouldn't have doubted him, but to think he could win it after that met like his life was a mess. He had injuries and I, I didn't think he was ever going to win another one. For sure. Um, yeah. You know, I look at Tiger Woods and obviously probably easily my favorite athlete ever. Um, I, I do think he's, you know, the greatest of all time in golf. Sorry, Jack Nicholas, I can't stand you, but whatever. That's, <laughs> that's not a secret. We talk about that a lot. Um, Tiger Woods kind of grew up as you know, in, in a, pretty bad household and people don't really know that but he was basically raised as a soldier by his father he you know he was he had this strict you know routine where he had to practice and he had to do stuff Tiger Woods was swinging a golf club since the day he could walk like it, he he really was he was born into this mindset where whereas most golfers at the time all golfers at the time really were like you know golf is a gentleman's sport you know, golf is this this thing where we can go out and we can smoke a cigar and we can have a good time and it's leisurely and, and Jack Nicholas is going to beat us because he's so incredible. And then Tiger Woods came out and was like, no, I'm going to get really athletic and I'm just going to step on all these people's throats because I can. And I, I figured that out at a young age where if I just 
am better physically than all these people, then I'm going to beat them. And he, and he proved that really early on, you know, winning the masters his first time up was incredible and having these records and, and winning so many golf tournaments to the point where he is, he became this figure in golf where he got too high, literally too quickly. And that's where all the, you know, all the scandal stuff happened, but with the injury and stuff, that's, I mean, you look at like a Bryson DeChambeau right now who just built himself up into this incredible Hulk like figure what's going to happen with him? Is that injury like when Tiger got really big? Is that going to happen with Bryson? We don't really know. Only time will tell. But, I mean, it's just one of those things where golf is an incredible sport. And I I think people, when they are outside of golf, they look at golf. Nobody would would argue that golfers are athletes. And you look at the field now and some of these guys. I mean, if you don't think they're athletic, you're just wrong. Like, look at Brooks Kepka. The dude has biceps the size of – like uh, I don't even know they're huge like he's just they're he's just sur- beast he's driving the ball 340 half the time I mean yeah he's <laughs> like, hammering like, the thing Bo is, is insane right now he's must watch tv even if you don't like golf just turn him on and see like look at this guy what is he doing <laughs> it's incredible what do you think is the future for Tiger Woods in the golf game do you think he can ever win another major do you think he's kind of just gonna fizzle out where are your thoughts with Tiger I feel like I'm, I'm contractedly obligated to say yes. Um, I am a huge Tiger Woods fan, obviously. And I, I do think he has the stuff to win another major, um, like Adam Augusta. It, it's, a, it's a tournament that really suits him because the Masters is so big that the field is actually a lot smaller than people think. Um, only so many people who play in the Masters legitimately have a chance. And Tiger Woods getting to play in that tournament for the rest of his life because of how many times he's won. Um, he's one of those guys who could win it any year. So you really can't say, no, there's no chance he's ever going to win another major. I think he's going to win another tournament. Um, you know, like you mentioned, the, the Tiger Phil thing, when Tiger Woods was playing in that, he looked incredible. He was hitting every fairway possible. And, yeah, he, you know, he didn't play the Memorial super well, but it's also the Memorial with, you know, insane rough where if you miss a fairway, you're basically out of it. But then again, he had some some moments in that tournament where he looked really good and looked like he could be the Tiger Woods that wins this tournament. And yeah, he had some bad rounds in there as well that kind of made that impossible. But to say he's completely out of it, I I, I think is ridiculous. Just because he has, it's Tiger Woods. Like you know, he's a mythical creature. He wins in an insane number. It's just who he is. What are some? Masters moments that are some of your favorite or that you rewatched because you just thought it was unbelievable. Yeah, um that, I mean obviously last the last Masters was ridiculous, you know, watching it, you know, with my roommates and we set up like seven TVs and and had it all up. Um I will say that you know, the the past number of Masters have been different without Tiger Woods having, you know, that presence like Jordan Spieth winning the Masters, I think was, I couldn't tell you exactly the year. But when Jordan Spieth won, I was like, this guy is going to be really good for a really long time. And Jordan Spieth hasn't done anything in a long time. So, or like when Patrick Reed won, and I remember sitting there like, who is this guy? Like, why is this guy the one winning the Masters? And then he turns out to be one of the most hated people in golf. So I think the Masters tournament, no matter who wins it, is always going to be special because it is, I mean, it's, that's what the master's tournament is. Um, but regardless of, of who's in it and who's playing, it's, it's just one of those tournaments where, you know, you have to watch it year after year, even if you don't like golf. Um, like last year I had buddies texting me and they were like, I don't follow golf. I don't play golf. I don't watch golf at all. And I'm watching this right now and it is really cool. (laughs) So, I mean, that's just one of those tournaments. So I don't know if I have, you know, a favorite moment. I do think this year is going to be super weird, you know, having a fall masters. I don't know what they're going to do. I think it's going to be nuts. Um, I it's, it's, it, it'll be interesting for sure. I mean, one thing I remember is, and I couldn't tell you the year, but uh, Bubba Watson with the uh, chip shot practically in the woods. Out of the woods. Yep. And just that shot was amazing. And him winning, it was really cool to watch. Bubba Watson having two masters win just blows my mind. Like that's crazy to me. <laughs> It's like yeah, Eli I mean, Manning yeah. having two Super Bowls. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're just like, <laughs> what? This guy? He's got the pink driver. He swings super yeah. weird. He's just kind of a goofy dude. I mean, 
whatever. I mean, he's got two masters, so he's doing better than I am. <laughs> Who are some other favorite athletes of yours besides Tiger? Um, well, in the golf world, I'm a, I'm a big fan of a number. I actually was a big Bryson DeChambeau guy, like, a couple years ago. Um, when he came out with, like, the one-length irons, I was like, that is the coolest idea I've ever heard. I actually hit him last year just to see what it was like. And, I mean, it wasn't, like, my favorite thing. Some of, the, some of like, the smaller wedge, wedge game with that, like, hitting a gap wedge that's as long as a seven iron, it's stupid. I'm not a, not a huge fan of that. But I, I have been a Bryson DeChambeau fan for a long time, even though he's really hated right now because he's so, like, polarizing. Um, he's, he's one of those athletes that I, I really do like. Um, another golfer I, I really enjoy is uh, Max Homa. Um, just a funny dude. Like, if you ever – you know, you're ever bored on Twitter, just go look at Max Homa on Twitter. He's so funny. He's the guy who, who roasts people's swings. So they'll send him a swing and he basically just goes off and, and just rips them to shreds. It is so funny. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Other sports. So I, I don't know, like, oh, it's tough. I don't know. The, like, like the NFL, I've always, you know, I'm a big Matthew Stafford guy, obviously grew up a Detroit Lions fan um used to love Calvin Johnson now I don't love Calvin Johnson because since he's you know really come out and said he hates the Lions which you know bothers me because I'm a Lions fan you know that's just kind of what it is um yeah I'm a Lions fan and I hate the Lions so I mean, it's so tough to be a Lions fan it's a joke I mean every year it's like this is our year and then it's trash it's terrible I'm really glad you brought that up because it's one of the things I hate most about being in this business and being in media and incorporating the Lions. The past three years, people have decided to write articles or go on NFL Network and say, the Lions are the best to go from worst to best. I mean, realistically, they kind of are. No, they're not. (laughs) I mean, you look at the talent that they actually have, and it's like they – Kenny Galladay, Matthew Stafford. What else do you have? All right, well (laughs) – I like carry on Johnson before he got injured, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, th- my biggest problem with the Lions, and, and year after year, it's the same thing. They don't put anybody around those guys. Like you just said, Kenny Galladay and Matthew Stafford, really incredible athletes. You could argue that they could do super good things if they were on any other team. Oh. But the, the leadership, it's just, and, you know, I'm not trying to knock the Ford family here, but do something. Like just try one time to win something. Like every year it's the same thing. Like, Oh, you know, we'll, we'll sign some guys and we'll, you know, we'll put some money into the team and like, you know, maybe that'll be enough to beat the Packers or the Vikings who just keep putting way more money into it. And it's like, come on, like do something good for once in your whole career. We're just trying to win a playoff game. That's all we want. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I hate to be this bad on them, but of course I'm a fan. They're probably like my favorite team in all actuality because I pay most attention to them and, you know, I love them, but at the same time, it's just, it's the same thing every year. And now it's getting worse because now high end media members are saying they're going to be first. And I, I, every time I see that, I really just want to go on social media and go, don't believe this. Like, stop. <laughs> I mean, I like, don't. <laughs> no, but fans do. Fans go, you know what? This could be our year. For, from last to first is not going to happen. I can, I can tell you that right now. They're never, the Lions potential wise, Never are, you know, from what I see, it don't look like they're going to be competing with the Chiefs anytime soon. But from not making the playoffs to making the playoffs, do I think they have a legitimate chance if they do some things right? Sure. Like, fine. Like, I, I, I like the draft that they had this year. I, I did. I, was, I watched the whole thing, and I was like, you know what? Some good picks here. This is, this is cool. Like, they're doing something that I can actually get behind. Do I think they're going to beat the Chiefs? Do I think they're going to be competitive in the NFL? Absolutely not. Like, there's no way. Like, come on. <laughs> Matthew Stafford is great. Is he Patrick Mahomes? No. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, it, it's tough being a Lions fan, too, because Stafford has been great. I'd say he's been that great for years. But, yeah, yeah. you know, his running back was Mikel LaShore. And <laughs> his best receiver one year was Chris Durham. Like, this, they've given this guy nothing. And, and he still puts up really good numbers. I mean, he does. I mean, I, he, I think he's had three or two or three five thousand yard years. I mean, he's he's a he's a really good guy and he's a really good quarterback. But this team just does not want to help him at all. The NFL came out with that uh, top one hundred thing. Was Stafford on there? Do we know? Uh, he so far hasn't been because it's been a okay. hundred to sixty. 
Oh, so okay. if you think he's <laughs> if you think he's gonna be up there one through sixty, then that's was your that last year? I don't think so. I don't think he's been. I don't. I don't think people in the NFL because that's a player voted thing. Yeah. I don't think anybody gives him credit. <laughs> well, no, he definitely deserves more credit, but yeah. For sure. yeah. I, I I just I don't think he, he's never gonna do anything here. I almost hope he gets healthy and then he finds another team and wins a playoff game there. Or like a Super Bowl. And everybody's like, wow, wait, Matthew Stafford's actually good. It's like, yeah, whatever. Like Ryan Tannehill leaving, you know, Miami and then winning a playoff, like multiple playoff games with the Tennessee Titans. Like, even though it really wasn't him, it was more Derrick Henry. It was, I mean, just, I was, my brother, JP, um, my older brother, he, uh, he's a big Miami Dolphins fan, but he's, he's a really big Ryan Tannehill fan. And when he started winning those playoff games, he texted me every single day and was like, let's go. <laughs> Tannehill is the GOAT. I was like, I don't know, JP. I don't know about that. I know you're a big basketball fan, and we're getting so close to real basketball games coming up with these play-in games. Give me every team you think has a shot to win the championship. That's bold. Um, see, I think the, the obvious ones, like the Lakers, um, the Bucks, obvious. Um, the one thing that's really kind of bothering me is the hype that the Pelicans are getting right now. Um, obviously, like the like ESPN just loves Zion. I don't think the Pelicans really have – like Zion's good, don't get me wrong. I think that, you know, they're really talented, but do I think that they're a playoff team – no, um, I don't know. I think I haven't watched them play in so long, and I think that's I think that's a big deal um, because coming back from this break, these teams could play completely different. You know, we saw how good the Lakers were and how how talented you know they were early on, and we saw you know the Clippers and we saw the Bucks and we saw all these these teams that look really good, but they just sat out for two three months. Let's see. I, I want to see a couple games first where I can kind of make a decision and be like, all right, this team, they're clicking immediately. Because that's, I mean, that's what the playoffs are. You need to be peaking and clicking as a team. Otherwise, you know, talent can only get you so far. So I think because of everything, I think there are a lot more teams that have a chance to win the playoffs. Um, you know, it, it, really, it really depends. It, it, like, it could go honestly any way. Do you have a team you're pulling for? Not really, honestly. I'm a, I'm a Pistons fan, so you know, we didn't get invited to that bubble. <laughs> no. You know, whatever. <laughs> That's kind of why baseball is so important to us because, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a huge hockey fan and I'm a huge basketball fan, so I'm going to watch, but the Red Wings aren't in it, the Pistons nope. aren't in it, and it's a miracle the Tigers are even 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> I'm stunned, by the way, that the Tigers are 2-2. Two and two. I am stunned. I wa I've watched every single game so far. I mean, it's four games, whatever. But I've watched every game. Even <laughs> I last like you watched the whole season. Like you're like, I've watched every single game yeah, so far. It's like I mean, it's four games. guys, I'm the biggest Tigers fan ever. I've literally sat down and watched every game this year. And it's, I mean, what is it? July? It's almost August, and I've watched every game. Oh, it, oh, that? that joke I is so know, bad. <laughs> I want to know if anybody went to Vegas over the past years and and put money on the Tigers on, what's the day today? The 28th of July. Said on the 28th of July, the Detroit Tigers are going to be 500. Vegas would have eaten that up. But, I mean, <laughs> they're 2-2. Two and two, Just saying. So, I like some of the guys who have improved over the past couple of years. You know, sure. Jacoby Jones looks like a completely different player. Dude, he looks great. He looks really he looks good. really good. And, I mean, getting him the power and, you know, the hits, I mean – Yes, it's only four games, but he's technically leading the team in RBIs. So yes. that's really cool. You know, CJ Crone, Jonathan Scope, those newcomers at Austin Roman, too. I mean, throwing mm -hmm. out Cassianos the other day, really yeah. good. Electric. <laughs> There's some positives, but this team is still leading the league in most strikeouts as batters. Easily, yeah. I mean, that's – am I surprised? Like, it's a really young team. I mean, first off, really young team. Second off, like – what are they playing for? You know, like they're, they're picked to go, they're picked to be last, you know, they're the talent clearly isn't there compared to some of the other teams. I mean, you look at even the Reds, they were, the Reds were stunned that they lost to the Tigers two games. They were stunned. You know, like 
they had no business losing those games to the Tigers, which tells me that, you know what, if we're the Detroit Tigers, we're going to swing. We're going to strike out. Maybe we'll hit some home runs. We have nothing to lose. There's, I mean, think about it. There's nothing for these, these, this young team, this new team. I mean, well, how many new guys did they have yesterday for their, make their major league debut? Three? Yeah, like three. three players made their major league debut yesterday. This team has nothing going for them. Why not swing for the fences? Like, don't, don't strike out looking. At least, you know, do something and, and try to be, be relevant in Major League Baseball. It's a 60-game season. Anybody can win. I'm not going to say anybody can win the World Series, but anybody can make the playoffs. So if, if the Tigers are, you know, keep that attitude and say, you know what, I don't care if we strike out. If we hit, if we hit a couple home runs and we're in ball games, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I think it's cool. <laughs> do the Tigers make the playoffs, and what's your final record prediction? Absolutely not. I think I think maybe maybe fifteen wins. Maybe and like early on, I was thinking like maybe ten wins. And I think now after watching them be chippy, you could argue that they might get to twenty. Um, but do I think they'll make the playoffs? Even with an expanded playoffs, no. The talent's just not there. Um, that doesn't mean it won't be there in the future. If anything, this this is a positive sign where. Maybe some of these guys can, you know, can stick around. And then you know, the, the starting pitchers we have coming up in the, in the minor leagues right now, maybe, maybe in a couple of years this team's, this team's competitive again. Right now, based on entirely what I've seen over the past four, four games, you know, I watch every game, so whatever. But do I think they have the talent to make the playoffs? Absolutely not. Do I think they have the grit and the, the competitiveness to make the playoff? Who knows? Maybe. Like – if anybody does, you know, they're swinging for the fences. So I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't think it's going to happen, but shortened season, you got a chance. You guys have any podcasts coming up? We, uh, we do. Um, our, our, we're we're kind of targeting some, some pretty big name guests. Uh, we, have, we have two people that we're kind of looking at that should drop by the time we go back to school. So like early August. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll uh, – well, we should have some some pretty cool guests. Um, not trying to name drop. One's an assistant. Um, one was an assistant at uh, at Pebble Beach. Um, has met Tiger Woods. Really, really cool guy. And then the other was an assistant at Augusta, Georgia. So it, it there's there's some cool stuff in the works for the Hybrid Podcast for sure. And where can you, people follow you on social media and the podcast? Yeah, follow us. Uh, you can follow the the Twitter um, for the Hybrid Podcast. It's all one word at Hybrid Podcast. Um, my, my Twitter is at Noah underscore Cole. I'm super funny guys. I, I'm serious. I'm really funny. I, I post some stuff that makes me laugh and probably the, the two people who like it laugh. So that's always good. Um, our podcast is available on Apple music, Spotify, pretty much anywhere where you can listen to a podcast. It is out there. Um, it's just hybrid podcast. Pretty easy to find. Thank you very much for the interview, Noah. And it's always good talking to you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. A lot of fun. It. A lot of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. To check yeah. out this interview of mine and previous interviews, go to the YouTube channel, James Paxson. And always thank you to the guest, Mr. Noah Cole.